Today's going to be a cracker of a show. Oh. No. You just continually crack me up, Martin. <laughs> Enough of the egg jokes. Enough of the egg jokes. I'm scrambling to think of some more anyway. <laughs> Look, I'm going to beat you to the next one, Karen. <laughs> the next joke. No, all yolks aside. All yolks aside. For Richard, in fact, because you Absolutely. are egg white intolerant. I am egg white intolerant. It was an excellent opening, I thought. I thought we were going to leave those alone. Sorry. Hi, Karen. Thank Lovely you. to meet you. Welcome to my Thank farm. You. Yes. Thank you so much no, for you're coming. Most welcome. I'm so excited. I say, hey, are we interrupting you? Are you heading to collect I'm eggs? About to collect some eggs. Would you like to come and help me? That's why we're Impeccable here. Impeccable timing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wow, well, we're really they're, amongst it, aren't they're picking, we? They're picking my boots. So, what type of bird are they? Um, they're Highline Browns. As you can see, they're very, very quiet. They're very quiet. It's almost like a purr, isn't it? Yes. It's just a constant, yes. beautiful hey. sound. I think they like Italian boots. <laughs> they, they do, and they like your buckles. It's the buckle. <laughs> yeah. So, what is your philosophy, Vesna, on, on the intensity of farming here? Um, I can we see... only stock 750 birds per hectare. So, you obviously have to keep moving them. Yeah, we yeah. move the sheds from paddock to paddock. Yeah, and, so um, it can regrow. That's what mm. I don't understand how the idea no. of 10,000 birds per hectare, how that could even be considered because look what they can do to a paddock. Mm. Okay, so now, now we're going to collect we... some eggs. Shall yeah. we? Yep, that's right. Go. Okay, so our sheds are a little bit oh, old handy. fashioned. Oh. I thought we had to go in. Oh. <laughs> so as you can see, the eggs are clean. They are. What happens from here? Like you're collecting them, then the eggs go it, into the processing room. We only wash um, a very small percentage of our eggs that are dirty. But as you can see, if the nest box is clean, the eggs are clean. Beautiful. Well, Vesna, being amongst it like this, it just doesn't get much fresher, does it, Richard? No, it doesn't. I mean, I am busting to cook with these eggs, and I can't think of anything better than my Asian-inspired omelette. OK. I bet you eat a few omelettes here, yeah? Yeah, we do. But <laughs> I've never had an Asian-inspired omelette. And I'm going to do a turkey schnitzel with a okay. red pepper and tofu mayonnaise. OK, that sounds good. Yeah. Thank you so much. That sounds great. This is going to make a pretty big omelet, I must oh, say. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, here we have Vesna's beautiful eggs. And we have learned that all eggs are not created equally. It comes down to stocking density and sustainable farming. And ethics. And ethics, which mm. I think then you are rewarded with a better quality egg, nutrient-wise, but also it tastes so much mm. better. And what better meal to cook than an omelette to showcase Vesna's beautiful eggs? Okay, let's go. So, for you, Rich, that might pose a little bit of a look. It does for me because I, I'm I don't eat egg white. We'll make two omelettes then. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. I'm onto it. But what I would like to do is make an Asian herb salad to yes. go with both our omelettes. Right. Okay. Starting with the dressing, I'm just going to grab some tamari. I think. A tablespoon or two. Tamara's got a uh, slightly different taste to soy. Just slightly. And I'm also adding some mirin. That's going to put the sweetness a in there. A bit of sweetness. And I'm also going to add some spiral rice syrup. That's going to add some density to the dressing, but also add a touch of sweetness and too. And it's also low fructose. Yeah, a bit of a stir. I think a squeeze of lemon also and a grind of pepper. Did you read my mind then? <laughs> Getting used to your kaza. Yeah. And then maybe a squeeze of lemon. Right. And the crunchy part of this quick salad is just going to be a little bit of wombok. And I'll just trim some off. Now I'm going to just pop that mm, into this bowl here and make a medley. Okay. With some bean sprouts, some Thai basil. I'm going to pick some of that off, Rich. Yep. I'm just going to put a little bit of chilli, but I think now we should get cracking onto some eggs. Yep. Pardon the pun. <laughs> Mine's only three yolky one. I reckon that's good. So I'm doing three eggs, Rich. Look at those lovely yolks. Look at those hideous whites. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Vesna. They're not hideous. Well, you know what they are. They're super fresh. That's they what are, they are. Yeah. I mean, the eggs are a complete parcel of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, 
and protein. Yeah, great, great little package. They can't be beaten. Oh. <laughs> Get that in. Okay, splash right. of water in mine. Splash of Liddell's in yours. Lactose-free milk. You might want to do a little pinch of... I'm going to do some coconut. The coconut and a little, a little bit of salt yep. in yours. Yep. I'm using this spiral gluten-free soy. Just a little dash and a fork, I think. A fork. Okay. Thank you. together. Okay, Rich, yeah. I think we are ready to cook. Okay. I've got two pans here. So into the pan, we're going to put a little bit of coconut oil. Shall we cook yours first? Okay. See what happens. I'm really interested to see how the coconut goes with the egg. It's sort of coagulating differently with the coconut oil and the... You have to have some patience. Great. I think that putting that shredded coconut in, yeah. in the omelette is really helping it all colour up beautifully. <laughs> all right, um, here we go. Oh, hang on. I wanted to put something really special in, Rich. All right. And add a lovely flavour profile of some smokiness. Just a couple of smoked mussels. Always fresh smoked mussels. Sometimes yeah. you can have an, an, an omelette like this with some prawns. Just before you roll the omelette. Yeah. Okay, let's see how we go here. Rolling down and then a bit of a cigar shape. Okay, Rich, let's go with this one. No, I'm pouring. Ah. Bagger off. Damn. <laughs> and we'll put on some smoked mussels. So I think we're ready to roll this one. Hey, would you want to pour the dressing over the, over the salad mm. and just mix it through gently? And just rolling. And then flip. Whoa. So when I say mix the salad, I want you to use open hands just so that we can see all those beautiful mm. herbs. And then the salad on top, Rich, just over to one side. And the next step I have, you know, this is totally optional, but it does take a simple egg dish like this to another level. Mm. It's a little bit of flavoured oil that's going to go over the top of the omelette to serve. Do you want a little bit of chilli on yours? Yes, please. Using that ginger and a little bit of garlic that we chopped up before and some of those sesame seeds and then that sesame and toasted garlic and ginger over the omelette and over yours rich please do so there you have it asian inspired omelettes with vesna's gorgeous eggs Maybe we should be eating this with chopsticks. Uh, I wish I was. I'm such an expert at this. Expert. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Yeah, let's eat because our jokes are rotten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just roll on, don't they? <laughs>skills are not what I thought they were. <laughs> well, luckily, I have very, very, very good turkey breast schnitzel skills. Oh, looking forward to it. So it's if you cracking. start chopping that, not so fine. And I'll start with my turkey breast. So this is really a take on chicken schnitzel and slaw, in Basically, a way. Basically, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. using the Steggles turkey. Rich, did you want any stalk in the slaw or am I...? Yes. Yes, for that. Yeah, yeah for that crunch. So I'm going to put this between two bits of baking paper and just smash it out a bit. It's great to use baking paper or even plastic. It just so it's more even, if you like. Yeah. When you're cooking a schnitzel, you need it to be like an even surface so that it all cooks in the pan at once because you don't want okay. one edge just... So there we have it. I'm just going to get my gluten-free flour from White Wings. Can <laughs> I uh, crack a couple of eggs for you? Yeah. Same as last time, I'm going to just use the yolk. Correct. Okay, yeah. great. Actually, I can't so reach. No, you can grab two of those. Just yeah. the yolks? Just the yolks. I'm going to grab a Coles soy milk. Two yolks enough, Rich. Two yolks enough. Or three. Look, I think it, uh, look, it's a bit of glue, I reckon. That would be possibly enough. Do you have a fork? Yeah. 
Okay, Rich, I'm okay. almost done this. All right. Okay, I'm just going to smash these in a bag. Smash them up. Because this is the alternative to breadcrumbs. Because most schnitzels mm. are coated in a bread, aren't they? Just like that. So suddenly you can turn something that wasn't a gluten-free option into a gluten-free option by just switching the base. And in this case, it's Cole's gluten-free corn chips. That's amazing. Mm. I'm looking forward to tasting this because I haven't actually ever experienced it before. Mm. <laughs> I've got this shredded right. coconut. It's the colours in this that I like. It's the green and the white together. A dash or two of cider vinegar. Yep. So you have a little bit of rice malt syrup in that. As well? Yep. And lime. fresh lime. You can go to town. Go to town on the lime. Go to town. Pinch of salt. Pinch of salt. Alright, there's yours. So the lime is really going to work well with the coconut, isn't it? And then that's all just tying back to the, yeah. you know, fresh lime, coconut and corn chips. So we, we might have a lemon wedge with the schnitzel or something like that. That lime juice is going to act as that in that same way, I reckon. Mm. All right. Let's go. I'm getting it all over you, Karen. I'm so sorry. We're lucky we're <laughs> using turkey. You're a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, you left yourself yeah. wide open for that one. Uh. Yeah, and now you should say, well, you're a bit of an old hen. Well, see, I, like to, I, I, I would never say that about you, Karen. Never. 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 Do you reckon we could double dip this to get more um, on there? So back into the back yolk into mix? Yeah. And then, yeah, why not? All right, so we've got our gluten-free corn chips. Now we're going to cook. We're nearly ready with our salad. What are you frying in? Just yeah. sunflower oil, okay. yeah. I'm going to make that tofu mayonnaise yeah. you were talking about. I just need a little instruction from right. you. So we need 125 grams of, of tofu. tofu. 125 right. grams? It's like half a block. Okay, cool. Yep. No problem. Beautiful. So some always fresh peppers. Yep. About half the jar. So it's got a nice, like, peach glow to it, basically. Okay. So the tofu's quite bland. That's why you need the mustard. Yep. Okay, I think we need some salt in this as well. Yep. All right, I reckon this is ready to turn. See, there we go, look. And so it's as simple as blitzing all this it together? It is as simple as blitzing it. There's no drizzling of oil or anything like that because it'll just... Okay. The tofu is just going to create I'm gonna that magic. I'm going to roll with you on this one. See how it gets that really lovely little blush of pink? Beautiful. All right, and I think this is ready now. Beautiful. All right, we are nearly ready to plate. I'm good. I'm ready with the sauce, Chef. You're ready with the sauce. Do you let people like yell chef in the kitchen? Yes, chef. Bad chef. Good chef. Just, it's usually chef. just yes, chef, yes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we've got our schnitzels. We've got our salad of coconut and silver beet with our fresh lime dressing. So you're going to just place like so. And just... I do like the colour of the red pepper in that tofu mayonnaise. <laughs> Look, it's all about having alternatives. I think some lime. Mm. A cheek or two. Yep. Rich, for a gluten-free schnitzel, this looks amazing. Look, I know you've seen it before, but you haven't had it this way. Shall we dig in? OK, let's go. So there you have it. Turkey schnitzel, corn chip crumb, with a silver beet and coconut slaw. Delicious. Mm. Well, uh, I'll tell you who's loving the rain. Those chicks. Those chickens. <laughs> Richard, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling like I'm in the rolling hills of southern Italy, so I've got this great urge to cook a puttanesca pasta. I should have brought my violin case with me. <laughs> <laughs> You've got it here somewhere. <laughs> puttanesca pasta is something I love dearly because you can make it from next to nothing from the pantry and the fridge. So when you think you've run out of everything... You haven't. Check yeah. that pantry, because usually you'll have olives and anchovies, maybe a caper or two floating around, um, maybe a bit of stale bread, because you actually finish this pasta traditionally with pan gratato, which is like grated bread, and it's actually in place of, of parmesan. It's like you couldn't, they couldn't afford yeah. cheese 
down south. So they've they actually fried stale bread off and seasoned it up and used it when the pasta was finished on top. So I'll be we've using got. This. It was that one. I'll be using this. You'll be using this. Well, because I know that you, you the, love a bit of fried bread. No, the Italians don't like like a, a cheese or pecorino or with seafood. So this. Oh yeah, my yeah, suggestion. Yes, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, I've got a couple of slices of our gluten-free bread here. Yeah. I'm just going to add it to the fry pan along with some oil. So, Rich, I'm going to go for four cloves of garlic in the pasta sauce itself. Mm -hmm. Could you start prepping that for right. me? Yeah. Smash off the garlic skins. Yeah. And then slice it finely. Ah, That's just fine. beautiful. So I've got a clove of garlic. I've smashed skin and all. Let's throw that into the pan and perfume the oil. I love the way that Karen uses perfume. I'd use like flavour. I oh, use I use extra virgin oil <laughs> as perfume. And then in with the breadcrumbs. And I'm thinking this is going to be a quick fry because the gluten-free bread doesn't take long to colour up. Salt and pepper. And I can see this is colouring up really quickly. Okay, I'm going to yeah. just tip this off now. You can see it is golden. Just put it onto some absorbent paper. Okay, let's get this sauce happening. Cool. I'm going to cook the puttanesca base sauce yeah. in the fry pan because I really want to reduce the sauce quite quickly. So in with the garlic. Hit me with the chilies, Rich. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. All right. There we Thank are. Thank you. Okay, now this is colouring quite quickly, so I'm going to add the anchovies at the same time. That's fantastic. And what happens there is the anchovies are just going to melt into the oil with the garlic and the chilli. And I'm going to turn down the heat. Next, in with a tin of Admona chopped tomatoes. So I'm just going to squash these olives. Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah. that was next. That was next. In with a handful of capers. That's I'm great. Say, I was Do you know what we're doing that for? No. Because I like to just have uneven pieces of the olives through the pasta. Not only do I love green, but I want to add some black as well. Okay. Okay, at this stage, I'm going to put in the pasta. All right. Rich, can you throw the olives in for me? Okay. Now, look, you might think I have this on a hard boil. Yeah. That's because I do. <laughs> I want to reduce those tomatoes down mm -hmm. and intensify all the flavours in the sauce. So it's almost an oily slick. Yeah. This pasta sauce isn't heavy. It's like a, a stain of tomato with all the garlic, olives, anchovies through it mm -hmm. with the capers. Yeah. Yep. So now for some herbs mm -hmm. we got from Vesna's Garden. We won't add the... Oh, yeah, let's add some parsley now. You want a parsley now? And I've got some dried oregano from Vesna's Garden that she's dried out and kindly gave us to cook with. Rich, All in right. with the parsley. In with the parsley. And... All right, here we are. Thank you. You know sometimes when tomato gets a bit acidic... Yeah. ..and you want to take the edge off it by adding a little bit of sugar... Yeah. ..do you think the rice syrup might do the same thing? Why not? Give it well, a go. Well, give it a go. Thank you. That's it. OK, so I'm just going to reach straight in here, Rich. Mm-hmm. And then with a little bit of that water off the pasta... ..actually just add the spaghetti mm. straight in. The best thing about gluten-free pasta is it doesn't, it's not going to, you're not going to have that bloated feeling. When I eat white rice, I have this immediate effect on my sort of system where I just actually want to go to sleep. Really? But if I eat brown rice, I'm fine. Same thing occurs when I have, like, gluten-free pasta. And you get... Oh. ..sauce everywhere. <laughs> OK, that's it. That's right. pasta puranesca. So, serving up. Look, you can either put this straight into a gorgeous big bowl, put some servers in the side, mm. make a green salad and rush it to the table, yep. or you can serve it up individually. 
which I'll do for you because I'm. Thanks. I know you're dying for the taste. <laughs> What I do like is I would do one thing one way and Karen's showing me new ways to do things. When you're plating up the pasta, I just realised this then, is you twist it and then when you finally again, there's a second twist. Yeah. It's the second twist on the actual plating. That actually, that's the it trick. It makes all the difference. Yeah. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> you just got to watch closely at everything we do. So, Rich, now it's time to crown the pasta with the pan gotato. Just sprinkling those gorgeously <laughs> fragrant crumbs over the top. And this is just not only giving flavour, but texture as well mm. to the puttanesca pasta. Should we go for it? Oh, we can't do it without gorgeous Vesna. Here I come. Don't Can eat see what we've been me. making? Oh, that's good oh, timing. that looks amazing. <laughs> it really does. And there you have it, my puttanesca pasta with gluten-free spaghetti. Thank you so much, Vesna. It's been such a great joy to come out here to your farm today. It fits so well with us here at the Intolerant Cooks. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much mm. for coming. And for this recipe and everything else we do on the show, head to intolerantcooks.com.au. And thanks again, Vesna. Thank yeah. you. Thank and you thanks, for coming. Richard. Ah, Karen, thank you. <laughs>